Coming up on today's show, Elon Musk confirms that the Tesla pickup reveal will take place on November 21st. Kawasaki showcases a very interesting electric ninja street fighter it's working on, and the energy range of electric motorcycles get longer legs for the 2020 model year. These stories and more coming next. Hi folks, and welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation. If I seem a little tired today, it's because I just got back from Germany last night where I was previewing a new vehicle that I can't tell you anything about yet. Suffice to say, when I can, I think you're going to like it. Make sure you've subscribed and have that bell icon clicked so that you find out when that video drops. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today at electricauto.org. And also a big shout out to our buddies at Fully Charged Live. Come see us at Fully Charged Live this coming February and find out how you can get discounts off your tickets at the end of the show. It's official. The wait to see what Tesla's cyberpunk pickup will look like is nearly over, with Elon Musk confirming this week via Twitter that the reveal will take place in LA on November 21st. That coincides with the LA Auto Show, but the actual reveal won't be at the event. Instead, it will take place at SpaceX's facilities in Hawthorne. The date of the reveal also coincides with the film Blade Runner, a favourite of Musk's, which takes place in November 2019. Sadly, we don't have an invite to the reveal and it clashes with a pre-existing commitment again, so sorry, we won't be there. Volkswagen has officially begun production of its ID3 electric car at its Weichau production facility in Lower Saxony, Germany. While the ID3 won't hit dealer lots just yet, the start in series production marks the transition of the first Volkswagen factory from internal combustion engine production to EV production. To date, more than 35,000 customers have placed deposits with their dealers to get an ID3, and deliveries will begin next year. According to registration data published this week, there's a new favourite among Norwegian car drivers, the 2020 Audi e-tron. In total, 873 e-trons were registered, equating to a massive 8.3% of all new car sales during the month of October. While the Tesla Model 3 dropped to a 1.3% market share of Norway's new car sales last month, it still leads Norway's charts for the year, and EV sales now dwarf internal combustion engine ones. Kawasaki posted its latest teaser video this week in a series of videos focusing on an all-electric variant to the Ninja Street Fighter that it says has been in development for many, many years. The short video shows the all-electric prototype on the track and lets slip some interesting things, like the fact it's retaining its gearbox, seems to have DC quick charging fitted, Chidemo on the prototype, and features a neat thumb-activated regenerative braking control that acts a little like the paddle on the Chevrolet Bolt EV. It's certainly coming to market, we just don't know when yet. Porsche has revealed a brand new specialist insurance product for drivers of the Taycan sports sedan, as well as plug-in hybrid variants of its Cayenne and Panamera plug-in hybrids. Porsche offering bespoke insurance products to customers isn't exactly new, but this new Taycan policy is tailored to Taycan owners and includes coverage for battery packs, charging stations, and what Porsche says is a mobility guarantee. It also includes full new-for-old coverage for replacement battery packs in the event that they are damaged in an accident. Tesla's 100 kilowatt hour battery pack has long been its largest capacity electric car pack for a number of years. But this week, Elon Musk confirmed via Twitter that a new, larger capacity battery pack is on the way. Answering a question about the upcoming triple motored Plaid Model S, Musk confirmed that the Plaid Model S would use a larger capacity battery pack. This means longer range Teslas are just around the corner. What capacity should we expect? Well, I'm thinking 120 kilowatt hours is a good bet. The Hyundai Ioniq has just received a mild range update for the 2020 model year, taking it to an official EPA approved 170 miles per charge from its 38 kilowatt hour onboard battery pack. While that's not the longest range out there, the 2020 Ioniq EV, while slightly less efficient than the 2019 model, is still one of the most efficient electric cars you can buy today. Other tweaks for the year include a fully refreshed interior, new, larger touchscreen display, and driver coaching system. Tesla has yet again tweaked pricing for its Model 3, this time increasing the US price for its Model 3 long range by $500. 
This gives us a total price of $48,490 and making similar changes around the world for other markets. But it's not just the price that's going up. The official EPA range is going up to 322 miles per charge, so that tiny price increase really shouldn't worry anyone. At the same time, the 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has just received its new EPA range ratings, increasing its range per charge from 240 miles in 2019 to 250 miles for 2020. This makes it the most efficient EV on sale in the process. Volkswagen has announced the name of the concept car we'll see unveiled in LA next week. Called the ID Space Vision Wagon concept, Volkswagen says it previews a production EV with nearly 600 kilometers of range that will go on sale in a few years' time. This vehicle does appear to be different to the ID4, which we all believed was an electric SUV, and says Volkswagen will be sold in both the US and China, among other markets. Interestingly, though, it said each market will get a subtly different variant. Like GM, Ford has been busy in negotiations with the Union of Automotive Workers for the last couple of months, and this week we learned via leaked documents that its latest round of negotiations have included cementing down where future models will be made. And while it's not publicly known yet where its Mustang-inspired electric vehicle will be built, Ford's negotiations have confirmed that its Dearborn, Michigan plant will receive $700 million of investment to ready it to produce next year's hybrid F-150 pickup truck. The same plant will also make the all-electric F-150 Ford has confirmed will hit the market in a year or so's time. And now it's time for short shorts. Chinese battery specialists and automotive company BYD has signed a contract with Toyota to jointly develop battery electric vehicles. For now, the partnership does seem to be restricted, though, to Chinese market cars. The former Lordstown GM production facility has been sold to Lordstown Motors, a new company that plans to share IP with troubled EV startup Workhorse. It also happens to have Workhorse's former CEO as its new CEO. Following months of negotiations, Tesla has reportedly signed initial contracts with Chinese battery cell manufacturer Cattle for the supply of Cattle manufactured cells to Tesla's Gigafactory 3. The contract is non-binding. Volvo Trucks has opened the order books for its FL Electric and FE Electric trucks in Europe. Designed for primarily urban delivery routes, series production will begin in March next year following positive feedback from test fleet operators. BMW says it now has 78,000 hand raisers around the world interested in buying its Mini Cooper SE Electric hatch. I should note, however, that Mini isn't yet taking deposits for the same. Volvo has joined the push towards removing child and slave labor in the cobalt mining world, introducing blockchain technology that will help it track where the cobalt it uses in its electric car battery packs originally came from. Tuning specialist Lister has announced the Lister SUVE, a high-performance tuned Jaguar I-Pace with a price tag of $160,000. The tuning includes weight reduction and tweaked software alongside the usual suspects. It's smeggingly fast. Daimler's CEO has confirmed at a conference in Germany this week that an all-electric version of its classic Mercedes-Benz G-Wagen is in the works. It might be boxy and not all that aerodynamic, but it's apparently the last car that Benz would ever consider stopping production of. Air pollution in India's capital city, New Delhi, reached such dangerous levels this week that the government prohibited cars with odd and then even numbered plates from driving on the road on alternate days to reduce the number of cars in the city. At the annual SEMA show in Las Vegas this week, Ford unveiled its Mustang Lightning one-off concept hot rod. Fitted with a dual-core electric motor and six-speed manual transmission, the Mustang Lithium can put out 1,000 pound-feet of torque. Also at SEMA was GM's E10 concept, featuring a potential crate engine GM may develop for classic trucks like the 62C10 the E10 is based on, powering it to Chevy Bolt EV battery packs producing more than 450 horses at the wheels. Kia has unveiled its Futuron SUV concept car at the China International Import Expo in Shanghai. It's an out-and-out -out concept that's unlikely to make it to production, and if I'm honest, it is a bit ugly. Fiat's bosses confirmed this week that FCA is exploring the idea of buying electric vehicle skateboard chassis, batteries and drivetrains from Tesla to use in its future vehicles. Tesla, though, hasn't publicly responded. Qing Mobility officially revealed its all-electric conversion kit for classic GM cars fitted with the LS series transmission this week. Essentially a crate conversion complete with motor, transmission, adapter and battery pack, the company showcased 
it in a 69 Camaro at SEMA. And not to be outdone, legendary Porsche tuning house RWB has revealed the ERWB in Vegas. Looking the part, this beast is capable of some serious performance, putting out 563 horses. Fun fact, it's built for speed though, not range. A Volkswagen-owned European brand Seat has confirmed it's unveiling its first ever scooter, an electric scooter, next week. It's said to have a power output of 125cc gasoline equivalents. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Like many other motorcycle companies, all-electric motorcycle firm Energica used the annual EICMA show last week to unveil its new 2020 lineup. Debuting this year is the EVA Rebel, which features a brand new 21.5 kilowatt hour battery pack that's good for a claimed combined range of 230 kilometers per charge. Existing models, including the SASA 9 and Ego, also get the new battery pack as an optional extra. I cannot wait to try one out. And finally, New Zealand has become the latest country to set new targets for its emissions, committing to reducing its total carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. There is one loophole, though. The methane from biogenic sources, as animals and plants to you and me, will be exempt from those targets. But PM Jacinda Ardern said that she was proud of how far the parliament has come on climate change policies since arguing if it was real or not 10 years ago. Well done, New Zealand, and here's hoping other countries follow suit. Oh, and OK, Boomer. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Visit our swag store. And if you fancy it, send us a coffee or support our upcoming LA Auto Show coverage with Kofi. Traveling to auto shows isn't particularly cheap and our shoestring budget appreciates any help that you can send our way. Thanks also to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's news roundup. Advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 1967, the Electric Auto Association believes that the future depends on going electric today. Find out how you can become an EV educator for yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just talk to real world EV owners about what it's like to drive on electrons by going to electricauto.org. We are members of the EAA and we are proud to support this fantastic nonprofit. And as promised earlier on in the show, it's Fully Charged Live's first ever US show next year in Texas on February 1st and 2nd. So come along and join in the fun. If you don't watch Fully Charged Live, you are really missing out. And if you haven't attended a Fully Charged Live yet, well, it's about time you do. I will be there with a the whole Transport Evolved team. And in addition to joining Robert and the rest of his team on the main stage, we've got some great second stage events planned for all of our fans. We've even got an awesome deal to share with you in terms of getting a discount off your tickets. You're going to get 15% off at Fully Charged Live USA if you head to the link in the show notes or click above and enter TE2019 in the discount window to get your discounts. Next week, like this past week. I'm out of the studio, so we may be a little slow to respond to news, but with any luck, I'm going to be back here in the studio next Friday to record next week's Roundup show before I head off later on in the day for another event. Until then, thanks for joining me, and don't forget to be better, kinder, and smarter with one another. Keep evolving.